Hi, I'm Jia Yi. I am an artist and a teaching artist. That means that I get to share my art form with people like you. I like to make art a lot of different ways. Sometimes I dance, sometimes I put technology, but one thing I really love is playing with paper. So today we're gonna work on some paper magic and make some pop-ups together. I wanna share something that I started working on earlier. So in this book, I have a bird with a mouth that opens and a tongue inside. On the next page, there is a volcano. And on the third page, there is a snake with an egg. So there's a couple different ways that people make pop-ups. Um, one method is called subtractive, and that means that you're cutting into the paper to make a shape. So in this first example, the mouth of the bird is made by cutting into the paper. But there's also an additive method, which is gluing on the tongue. In the next piece, the, the volcano is made by adding a second piece of paper. So this is an additive method. And in the third piece, this snake is also made by adding another piece of paper on top. So the first thing I'm gonna teach you is a subtractive shape. This is one of the first shapes that people learn. To get started, you're gonna need some materials. So you need a pencil, glue, scissors, and something to color with. Markers are good, colored pencils are good. If you have crayons, those are great too. I also have an eraser, because sometimes I like to erase my lines, but it's okay if you don't have that. So what you need is paper that's a little bit thicker than regular paper, like cardstock. If you don't have cardstock at home, that's okay. Um, if you get thicker paper in the mail, um, like leaflets, you can use that. You can also use a paper bag or even just regular notebook paper or printer paper. So I'm gonna start um, by using about half a sheet of paper. And to make half a sheet of paper, I am going to fold my paper in half. Then I'm gonna use the back of my marker to get an extra good crease. And right now, I am going to go ahead and cut along the crease so I have half a sheet. This first method, you're gonna start by folding your paper in half. Like this. And so your pop-up is gonna go in the middle. Um, the next thing that we're gonna do is we want to uh, make some lines for where we're gonna cut. So I'm gonna draw with my pencil two parallel lines. And I'm gonna cut along these lines. I can open up my paper to make sure that I drew in the right place. So I want my lines to be in the middle, not on the edge. Now I can go ahead and cut along here and along here. When I open it, it doesn't pop up yet. So what I need to do is push in with my fingers and then pull in and fold down. I can use my marker to get an extra good crease again. And when I open it, it pops up like this. So in here, I wanna add something, because this is pretty plain, right? It's just a square that pops up. So I'm gonna start by adding in another piece. So I started to make a sailboat. And I'm gonna continue coloring this before I add it in. And now what I wanna do is I'm going to glue it onto one of these flaps. So I'm gonna flatten this out all the way and I wanna put my glue in this bottom part here because this is the part that pops up. So 
So I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here. And it's just on this bottom part. And now I want to add my sailboat right here. I can close it a little bit or open it to add that piece in. And it looks like this. It also looks like my sailboat sticks out a little bit. That's okay. And maybe there are other things I want to add to this, like maybe I want to add some waves. So I'm going to go ahead and use my pencils to add the ocean in the background. It's a little bit harder for me to color this because I glued this on um, before I started coloring. So what some people do is they make a prototype first, which means that they start a piece, but they don't add all the color, and then they do it again where they can add all the color. And it looks like this. The next piece that I'm going to try is an additive piece. So this process is pretty similar, where you want to start with half a sheet of paper and fold it in half. And this one, I'm going to use a spiral that I add on top. So this one is pretty similar to this piece where there's a spiral that I add on top. So to make this one, what I want is a second sheet of paper. And the second sheet of paper needs to be able to fit into half of your page. So this needs to be smaller than this amount. And I can see that this scrap of paper is a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw with my pencil where I am going to make my cut. That way I know it'll fit inside. To make your spiral, I start by drawing my spiral. So this is what a spiral looks like. I'm just following the line. I'm also going to cut off these edges. And I don't need this part either. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off right here. So this is my spiral piece, like this. To attach this, what you wanna do is glue one part down on this side and one part to the other side. That can be a little tricky to do. So I'm gonna start by gluing just this part right here in the center of the spiral. So I put my glue down in the center of the spiral. And now I'm gonna glue this piece in. I wanna make sure that this flappy side is on the far side of the paper. That way it'll line up over here. It'll make sure that your spiral's a lot bigger. So I'm rubbing this so that it's nice and stuck. Then I'm going to put a little bit of glue right here. Okay. 
So now what I want to do is I want to glue it to the opposite side. And the way that I'm going to do that is just by folding my paper and rubbing this. And I want to wait a little bit for it to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and push it over here and put some markers on top of it so that it has some time to dry. I started on a spiral already earlier, and so this spiral looks like this. And so now I can decide what I want to put inside of it. With my snake, I went ahead and colored all of it before I cut it out, um, but it's pretty, sometimes it's easier if you glue this in first just to get an idea of what's gonna happen. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and add something else. Um, maybe I could do a snake or maybe I could do something different. Do you have any ideas of what you might do? So I think for me, what I wanna do is, um, a ball of yarn that is unraveling. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my pencil and use this to color in the outside of my page. And I'm noticing that it's actually really, really tricky to draw on here um, because I have a piece that's already stuck on there. So what I might notice is that Maybe it's easier if I color it first before I glue it on. So if you have a good idea of how you want to do your drawing, you might be able to do it before you glue it in. So this is what my ball of yarn looks like. And maybe I can continue drawing off of the page and I want this to end in a bow like that. If I wanted, I could add other things into here too. So I could glue other shapes on. Um, and this could be a lot of different things. It could be a tornado or it could be um, it could be a worm, or it could be a galaxy. There are lots of different options that you could do. The next piece I want to show you is another subtractive shape. So this subtractive shape is pretty similar to the mouth of this bird. So to make this piece, again, you want to start with half of a sheet of paper. You can start by folding your paper in half. And I'm gonna use a marker again to crease it. And then I have something like this. And this shape can be a little bit tricky. So what you wanna do is you wanna start by um, drawing a line. So I'm gonna draw a line that goes like this. And so this is diagonal. And if I do this diagonal line, then I'll see that it looks like this. And when I push in here, it doesn't really push in the same way, right, if I'm pushing straight out. So what I want to do is hold the paper so that I'm supporting it and push this in diagonally. So I want to push this in diagonally like this and close it. So this part is pretty tricky, but when I open it, I can see that this actually opens at a diagonal too. So this would be the same as the top of the mouth of the bird, and if I added a second one in, I can make it into a bird too. But there are other things I might want to add here instead. Um, so are there any ideas about what you think you could add? I think for me, what I want to do is try and add some more shapes on top of this. So I think that this could be a lot of different things. Um, maybe what I could do is cut off part of it um, to change the shape. So right now, this is a full shape like this. But what I could do is push this back out or fold this the other way. and cut part of it off. So I'm gonna cut part of it this way, I 
like this. And when I push this back in, there's actually sort of a flat part right here. And now what I wanna do is I wanna make some cat ears. And so I'm gonna go ahead and draw some ears separately. So now I am going to cut my ears out. And there's a little bit of extra, so that way it can have some space to glue in. So again, I want to use my glue on this little bit of extra space. And this ear is going to glue in like this. And this ear is going to glue in over here. And now I have my cat like this. And if I want, I can add some more details. Like maybe I want my cat to be lying down. So now my piece looks like this, where I have my cat head, and it pops up like this. So each of these were pop-up cards. If you wanted to make it into a pop-up book, there's a couple ways that you could go about it. So one way is that you could take the pieces that you made and glue them together back to back. So maybe I want to start with this piece and this piece, and I want to glue this part to that part. So now I have a book with one page and two pages. And then I could add more too. I can add my sailboat into here. So now I have a pop-up and we have our flat with our flower. And we have our cat. And we have our sailboat. So those are just a couple of ways to make pop-ups. There's lots of other ways. And when I'm making pop-ups, I make mistakes a lot. And that means that sometimes I start making something and I come up with an idea, but realize I want to do it a little bit differently. So after I try things out a couple of times, I will um, try making it again after I've made some changes. There are many, many ways to make pop-ups. You can use some of the ways that we tried today. Um, you can also try new ways. See if you cut things out at different angles, if you can make new shapes. If you cut things out where the lines are, one is longer than another, it might make a different shape too. You can also try adding on new pieces, and I would love to see the creative things that you come up with. Thank you so much for playing with me. I'm J.E., and I love working with paper.